Hello, welcome to Local Edition. I'm Leslie Layton. A lawsuit over state prison overcrowding forced inmates to do their time instead in county jails. Problem is, the problem is now in county jails, uh, inmates are being released early. With us now is Kurt Hagman, Assemblyman, uh, to talk about that. Um, Great to be welcome. here with you, Leslie. Thank you. You know, what are you seeing as the effect that we're having locally as inmates are released early from our county jails? Well, we're seeing crime on the rise in all different categories, and I guess for the viewers, it's it's something good to visualize. Um, prior to 109, we call it AB 109 after the bill number, um, an inmate would stay in county jail. The maximum sentence was a year, otherwise they go to state prison, and a lot of times they're staying to go to trial. So the average stay for an inmate was roughly about three months. So if you have a bed in a jail, you would basically house four prisoners for that one bed for a year. Well, with the AB 109, the re-shift from realignment, the average stay for a state prisoner shift to the county jail is about five and a half years. So you're displacing about 20, 25 other inmates that would be using that bed over that same period of five and a half years um, for this one state prisoner. So those people are not staying in jail. So the, the effect for San Mateo County, in matter of fact, is that they can't house anybody. So if you get arrested today, you're out tomorrow, unless you have a bail that's over like $750,000 now. And there's a difference on the county level too. They can't pass the buck anywhere else. There's nowhere else to send these prisoners, so they go out onto the street. Yeah, they're forced by a federal court order that says once you reach your capacity, you have to release everybody. Mm -hmm. So as they're, it's a kind of like revolving door. So the person who did a crime today is doing the crime tomorrow. So you've seen the stats and all the crime levels from, from the minor crimes to the murders are going up in the state for the first time in like decades, while the rest of the country, it's been pretty stable. The State Department of Justice saying uh, that is true. The um, San Bernardino County Sheriff says that it's mostly property crimes, and that is true. The majority are property crimes, but murders also rose 4.7 percent, uh, forcible rape 2 percent, and these are things that uh, could be attributed to realignment, but then some people are defensive. They say it has nothing to do with this shuffling. Well, I think common sense would tell us that if you have the same person that did the crime yesterday, would go out tomorrow and do it if there's no deterrent. Deterrence helps keep people from doing the wrong thing. If you weren't going to get a ticket for using your cell phone, you'd probably still be using the cell phone even though against the law to do it now. The same thing with seatbelt. It's, it's practice that deterrence affects people from doing certain actions. And the fact that these folks know that they're not going to spend any time in jail doesn't stop them from doing their, their crimes. And there are costs on every level. If you think about the cost that goes into an officer going out and arresting and the courts going through the process of convicting these people who don't end up doing any time at all. Anyway, that is a waste of money. Rehab is also supposed to be something that happens on the county level. How's that going? And that's a, a new um, animal for them because used to people short term, you know, year or less is minor crimes, but now you're doing a longer term, you have to do the medical issues, you have, you know, older folks that are staying in county jail. I mean, and some people are sentenced to 42 years in LA County Jail, for example. They just don't have the capacity or the, or the facilities to handle that kind of prisoner to begin with. And so we introduced legislation to try to track these 109ers. We know that one was released a few months ago that uh, Al San Bernardino and murdered a LA County Deputy Sheriff, for example. Mm -hmm. We know there's bad outcomes from this. We believe it's very bad policy to begin with. We, uh, most of us did not support this policy and we'd like to see a study done on it to see what is the true effect on uh, cost, what's the true effect on crime to our residents, because that's one of our primary jobs is to protect our citizens from you know, being uh, robbed or murdered or all the rest of it. And if we're not doing that job, we should rethink 109. Because before you do the study, you have no uh, evidence that says this is the effect that AB 109 is Correct. having on Just the community. ancillary stories that we read in the newspapers, and we, we try to track back some of them. I know there's like seven to 10 murders that happen already this year. All right. Um, uh, Kurt Hagman, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for having me. That. And thank you for joining us. I'm Leslie Layton.